Hey everybody, welcome to Model Monday. Uh, this is our first Model Monday of the new year. I hope you've enjoyed all the videos we had of the Mecham auctions. That's the Mecham auction right there. And uh, we went there, we put about nine videos up. But today we're gonna be building AMT's 1963 Chevy 2 Nova Station Wagon. Uh, this is a curbside style kit. Uh, curbside style means the kind that you would find at a um, like a car dealership back in the day. So it does not have a full engine. If we look at the parts that came with it, we've got uh, the body, which is actually really, really detailed um, because these would have been the cars you would have found at a Chevy dealer uh, that could show you what the car looked like, what colors they came in back in the day. A lot of times back before the internet, way back in the 1960s, they didn't have, there was dealerships that would not have a lot of cars there. So they would have model kits of the cars that they may not carry or anything. So you could look at them and picture them in different colors. So this is the body, super detailed body. If you look at it, um, it has all the, everything down to uh, the Chevy 2 emblems on it. The gas tanks, all the door trim, all the chrome trim. Back door is really, really detailed. We have some chrome with us. Uh, the chrome right here, you have the front grille. We have the stock wheels, just like in the box. We're basically building a stock uh, car here, so it's gonna have the mirror. There's not gonna be a lot of extra chromes. It's gonna be what would come on the car. Here's a rear bumper right there. You then have an interior. So the interior is gonna be nice and detailed, but this, part of the engine which only shows the bottom of the transmission and the bottom of the engine the oil pan would go into a detailed chassis and here's the detailed chassis <coughs> excuse me um it the chassis is basically one piece as you can see it doesn't have um this part here is going to go in there it doesn't have a separate leaf springs or anything else it does have um, the uh, metal axle that's going to go through here and whoops and there's your back lights right there it has really nice white wall tires very thin you have to make this stock there's no other way of making it stock and then you also have interior parts here you've got the dashboard the steering wheel a back seat because some of these didn't have back seats some did depending on what back in the day they didn't really have suvs so station wagons were the suvs of the day so we're going to put that back seat in it has a squirrel here i don't know why there's a squirrel but there's a squirrel right there um and then it has the wheels right here the back of the wheel um and for the front i believe we're going to use these pins and here's the pin holders so that you could set however you want it to sit on the pin holders so there's not a lot of parts here's the glass right here you've got a rear glass front glass and headlights and then you have your tail lights now the cool thing is with this it comes with a whole bunch of uh, decals you can do a vacuum cleaner salesman you can do a grocery service you can do the ufo official UFO investigation vehicle. You can do a public utility um, commission vehicle. You could do telev telephone repairs. So there's all kinds of ideas you can get if you want to put these on. You don't even have to. If you look at the box art, they don't have any. We will. I don't think we're going to do the, this color that you see on the box art. We're going to come up with a different color and I know we are going to use some of these decals. Uh, the rest of the decals are going to go in the decal box because we always have pickup trucks or other trucks that we could use some of these on. Anyway, um, check out our video of the build. It shouldn't be too long. And uh, this is a real easy build. So if you're somebody new to modeling uh, or you want to just get your kids involved, if you look here, this is the whole instruction seat. There's Step one, step two, step three, and step four. And that's it. There's four steps, not a lot of parts, with a really, really good-looking model that would look great on any shelf. 
And uh, so when we come back, we'll get started. So welcome to another episode of Junkyards and Barn Finds with Sean and I'm Sean. All right, guys, so let's take a quick look. Um, I just separated the parts. There's not a lot of parts here. So really all we're gonna do is put this piece in there and we separate everything. Here's our interior parts. Here's our body parts. Here is the bottom with the frame suspension parts. And we're just gonna go ahead and paint them. So I guess we're gonna go off the paint and then when we come back, We'll put everything together and that'll be it. So very easy model. All right, we'll see you next in paint. All right guys, before we get to painting the main parts that we're ready to paint, I'm gonna show you, and if you've watched the channel before, um, you've seen this before. So we use panel line accent color and this is the black one. And what we're trying to do is if you look at the chrome that they give you, chrome is usually way too chromey chrome for real cars. But if you look at the box, you can see on the box where the chrome has a lot of black in it, right? So you got your grill has black areas, blacked out areas, same with the hubcaps. So what we're gonna do, and that's what this does, this is a panel line accent color, and you can get this at any hobby shop. I think they also sell it at like Hobby Lobby and everywhere else. And basically all you're doing is you're taking, it's a very watered down black. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, go to the grill here, and you're just going to put this in to the grill. And as you can see, it will put black paint without really wrecking any of the chrome. So it still has a chrome grill, but it fills it in and looks very lifelike, like you would have a grill. So when you're, we put the grill into the car there, um, when we, when we put it into with the model, then the grill will look the way it's supposed to as if it's not just one big piece of chrome, but that it actually has holes and areas in it. And if you look down here, we're going to do the same thing with the wheels. You just put it in here, let it run around and it will fill in all the spots that should be blackened, leaving the parts that are not to be blackened um, chrome. So it basically just fills in the spots that on a actual wheel or a hubcap in this case would be black. Because if you look at a lot of these 60 cars, they had hubcaps that both had um, black areas in it as well as the chrome areas so you just fill that in let it run around on its own by gravity fed and there you go and i think the other piece here that is a mirror i don't know what these are these must be for the the back the trunk or something so and uh if you see like i said we look at it this way we'll look at it a different angle and you'll see that it black it puts all the little black areas into the grill and it did the same thing for the hubcaps there you go and then we'll let this dry while we do the rest of the paint and that'll look awesome so there you go All right, so before we paint, there's only one thing I want to do. And we're going to put the front. We're going to put on these um, little uh, front 
clips in, I guess they're called. They're basically gonna hold the front wheels in. And the reason I wanna do it now is with these little pins and stuff is I don't want to wait till there's paint on them because uh, paint will inhibit there's a big word inhibit but paint will inhibit the glue so if you look at assembly in number three right here right there it shows the two axle pins and two axle blocks and it shows the axle block is going to be with the open end pointing up and it's going to go right in there like that so we're going to put them in and that way they're glued now you the reason they design them this way is so that you can have the front wheels rolling but i don't want the front wheels to roll so i don't like things rolling off shelves but you can so anyway and yes i use tube glue a lot of guys use liquid glue or crazy glue but I've been using tube glue for, well, since about 1982. And I don't really see a reason to change, honestly. So, um, I'm comfortable with it. But you use whatever glue you want. Whatever makes you feel comfortable. Some people like liquid, I mean... There was a guy named Gary Atley I went to high school with. Um, I went to tech school, actually, in Pennsylvania. And we were in high school back in the 1980s together. Gary, excellent model builder. I don't know what he ended up doing. I don't know if he went to college and stuff. I think he was planning on being an architect or something. But we all took drafting and design together, which was working with blueprints and all, in tech school at Millbucks Votech in uh, Pennsylvania outside of, uh, outside of Philadelphia. And, and Gary, even back in the early 80s, had just started using the liquid cement, and he was an excellent, excellent model builder at the time. Um, don't know what happened to him, but me and him and John Benford used to build models when we were in high school. And, uh, anyway, so I can never, I tried the liquid, the liquid glues just didn't work for me. But, you know, if it works for you, that's wonderful. Anyway, so there we go. So we just put the pins in, let them set, let this set for just a little bit. Um, and not really worry about putting the wheels on at the moment, maybe, because maybe I should, I could probably put the wheels on as well. I'm going to let this dry for about 20, 25 minutes, and then we're going to paint everything oh and while we're looking so last yesterday because this has been sitting here started last night but if you look you can see how the um grow looks let me turn this light off so you can see it better this light is so powerful but it's good for building but if we turn this light off you can see with the grill and you can see the wheels you can see it blacked out all the areas just like the box art there but you can definitely see on the grill now how it looks you got black in all the spaces the wheels have black in all the spaces um and that was when we used this panel line color so it's dry now we'll let it sit overnight and um 
So next thing is we will um, maybe we'll just take two of the wheel two front wheels, stick stick them on there, and then paint. So what we're gonna do while we're here, let's talk about the paint. So we are going with let me turn this light back on here. All right. So for the interior for this one, we're gonna use a Craylon. Cover Max uh, paint and primer, and it's called Brown Boots. Right there, it's a brown boots. It's satin. Uh, it looks like this when it's done. It really looks like a leather interior. So we're gonna use this, and we'll spray the inside of the body. When we when we do the body, we're gonna spray the inside of the body with that. And then we'll tape off the inside of the body because um, we want to do the headliner in there. So the first thing we'll do is we'll spray the inside of the body with the brown boots. Then we'll take painter's tape and we'll tape off the inside windows and then we'll paint the car. So that's and that's going to be the interior. Exterior. We're going, because it is a work working car, we're going to use, I think, the telephone repair. Here's the various stickers, or uh, decals. We're going to use the telephone repair, Bill Ringer's telephone repair. Um, so we're going to, since we want to make it look like a work truck, we're using a gloss sage green. Uh, this is gloss, and it's a paint and primer from Rust-Oleum. And it's a it's kind of a grayish green, but I think that's a really good color for a work vehicle. So we're gonna use that. Um, we will then for underneath, underneath will the the car, which is gonna be all this part. We will use a uh, satin granite. So that would be like the undercoating. Um, and underneath the car, the wheels. So we're going to use this for that. So it's not a, it's not a big build. It's not a big paint build. I was going to look at primer, but all the ones that I'm using have primer mixed in. So we won't really need to primer anything. Um, but do wash the parts, especially the body. And you, you can wash, you can just wipe it down to get all your finger stuff off it. Wipe it down with Windex if you want to. Or you can use True Green or one of the other detergents. But if you take Windex and wipe it down with Windex and then let it dry for about 20 minutes, that will get rid of anything that was on uh, the outside so it doesn't disfigure the paint, especially when you're working with the hood and the body. But anyway, so that's where we're going. Uh, well, oh, this part here, just so you can see how this goes in. This goes in from the top. And there are pins, pin one, pin two, pin three, pin four right there. And so this thing just slides in and it clicks in actually. So I just clicked it in. It's kind of a pain, but there you go. So it goes in there and it clicks right in like that. And then it shows like that. So we'll be painting this separately because I want to detail the engine and the transmission with uh, probably blue oil pan and uh, aluminum for the transmission, black for the starter. And then we'll put this in after that. And we're going to detail the bottom here. We'll, we're going to paint the um, exhaust system. We're going to, is there an exhaust system? Yeah, right there, the little exhaust system right here. Comes up there, comes out over there. We'll paint the uh, fuel tanks. We will paint the um, drive shaft right there. So, anyway, that's where we're going, and we'll talk to you shortly. Should they subscribe to this channel, even if they don't like cars today, for this one? Probably just for this one. 